Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV. So as you guys all know, the ban list just dropped and it's one of those lists where technically not that much happened, but it did feel like a pretty significant list. Obviously hits to Striker Dragon, LP and Misk were really significant, but oh my God, they actually decided to put Engage back to one. I think that was the most insane change that a lot of people are reacting to. I don't know if it necessarily is enough to make Sky Strikers meta once again. Who knows? We'll see what happens within the next couple of events. Anyways, in today's episode, we are taking a look at some cards that are trending on the market as a direct result of the July 2021 ban list. Let's get started. Okay, so we're kicking things off with the big card to move on the list, that is Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, which just went from banned to limited status. Now, even though a lot of people talked about Engage potentially coming back, I don't think very many people thought that it would actually happen. It's just one of those cards that was abused for so long, I thought it would be quite a while before we saw the card come back, if at all. Anyways, this card is of course insane, it's basically a pot of greed for the Sky Striker strategy. I don't think we're going to see it abused as a generic engine with just the one copy of Engage, so that should be fine. But fortunately, Engage does have three printings available. We did see some people freak out at the beginning and buy Engage at some ridiculous prices, but now prices have kind of cooled off as people realize that the card is just limited, it's probably not going to go to more than that anytime soon. Right now, if you're looking for the original secret rares from Dark Saviors, Unlimiteds you're looking at about $20 a piece, while the first deads are about $35. For the very similar looking Battles of Legends secrets, those are only $12 or so, and the Ultras from the 2019 Mega Tins are about $10. If we'd only seen one or two printings for this card, Engage could be a much pricier card than it is, but thankfully it's had those three printings, it's fairly accessible, and of course to play the Sky Striker deck, you just need the one copy. If you guys were holding onto this card, hopefully you were able to sell it at a hyped up price when the ban list first dropped. If not, it's up to you guys, and whether you want to bet on it seeing play and possibly going back up in price, or you want to bet on the deck falling short of expectations and the card price falling back down. The next card we're looking at here is Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor, and we're just going to touch on it briefly because I feel like the card is sort of similar to Engage, obviously its effect is very different. Widow Anchor is kind of like a breakthrough skill slash crackdown type of card, one of the best tools that the Sky Striker deck has to offer, since it can allow you to use it either defensively to disrupt your opponent, or offensively to steal an opponent's monster and push for damage. Anyways, this card has actually had the exact same three reprints in the same sets and rarities as Engage. The original Dark Savior Secret Rares are about $25, the reprint Secret Rares from Battles of Legend Heroes Revenge are between $17 to $20, and the Ultra Rares from the Mega Tins are about $12. I think that a big thing to note here is that Widow Anchor is a card that's played at 3, well obviously Engage is limited, so I think that if the deck were to take off and do well, Widow Anchor might see more of a spike in price than Engage. Just just because there would be a greater demand for more copies. Of course, Widow Anchor was limited and then semi-limited in the past, and has slowly peeled off the list. We've already seen the card have a history of shooting up in price each time that it was slowly taken off the list. On the flip side of that, it is possible that we see Widow Anchor reprinted in a side set something like Maximum Gold Eldorado if the archetype gets popular enough once again. Only time will tell if the deck is able to perform at a high level. Next up we have Sky Striker Ace Kagari, specifically here I'm talking about the ultimate rare version. I guess that when we look at Kagari we could also be looking at Shizuku, Hayate, and Kaina, all of which are hyped up ultimate rare Sky Striker Link monsters from OTS tournament packs. Kagari is I think the most notable one, it's one of the main pieces that allows you to abuse Engage by adding back a Sky Striker card from your graveyard on summon. Of course Shizuku and Hayate are useful as well, helping to pull specific cards out of your deck so that they're accessible, and then Kaina is kind of like a game winning potentially card that allows you to gain life points. Anyways, Kagari is the most ridiculously priced one, sitting up at $230 on TCG Player at the moment, though for the record we do also have Shizuku at $130, Hayate at $70, and Kaina at $40. Fortunately, we do have multiple printings of Kagari available, with my personal favorite being the Mega Tin Secret Rare, though of course there's also the alternate art versions from Maximum Gold and Dual Overload, so the card is really really easily accessible if you just want to own a copy of the card to play with. Chances are, if you own Ulti Kagaris and the rest of the Sky Striker Link monsters, you're just like those players with max rarity mermails or spellbooks, and you're dedicated to keeping and holding onto your deck in highest rarity, which is totally fair, the deck does look really really beautiful in max rarity. 
If you're not though, and you're okay with playing a lower rarity version of one of these cards, I would definitely consider looking to sell the card now while it's hyped up right after the ban list. Okay, so I swear just one last Sky Striker card for us to look at here. We have Rose. So the Sky Striker deck is kind of odd in that it plays just two main deck monsters, Ray and Rose. And in fact, Rose wasn't actually released until after Engage was banned. So we've actually never been able to play Rose and Engage at the same time. This is kind of an interesting piece of the deck. It's not the strongest card on its own. I think you run two or three copies though, just because you need it to go into your link monsters. With engage only at one, you can't search out Hornet Drones or Ray or Area Zero as easily as you would have been able to before. Now the interesting thing about Rose is that it actually just came out after any of the other Sky Striker cards. So whereas a lot of the Sky Striker stuff we're seeing them have multiple reprints, this card just has the one printing from Ignition Assault. With only one printing available, the card has shot way up in price and it now sits at over the $40 mark on TCG player which is obviously a lot for a fairly new ultra rare. However, being from Ignition Assault, we should definitely be wary of this card being reprinted in the 2021 Megatons, probably as a secret rare to match the Prismatic Secret Rare Ray, which would actually look really really nice. With something like Kagari, I mentioned before that if you want to keep the higher rarity version as a keepsake, you could go ahead and do so, but with Rose, I think it's definitely something that I would want to offload, with what I would say is a 90% chance that the card gets reprinted in a nicer rarity in just a couple of months. Alright, so the other significant unbanning of a card from this ban list was actually Mirage Stallio going from banned to limited status as well. Now to be fair, I don't think that Salamangrate is going to be doing very much this list, even with Mirage Stallio at 1. The deck only has one Gazelle and one Circle, and Mirage Stallio still locks you into Fire Monsters, so you can't even use it to go into Zeus, kinda lame. But then again, I think we did see a couple of Salamangrate tops this format or last format. Nothing too too crazy, right? But I guess if you hit that right combination of luck and skill, it's definitely possible to see the deck top. Anyways, Foxy is one of the better normal summons in the Salamangrate deck, letting you duality for a Salamangrate card without the special summoning restriction. It is also a level 3 monster, so if you need to, you can use it to go into Mirage Stallio. Now specifically here, we're taking a look at the Secret Rare version, which used to be only around a dollar for most of this card's lifetime, but it's now actually up at the $7 mark. I believe it was as high as $10 at one point. It's one of the few cards for the deck that is a little bit harder to find, and the Prismatic Secret Rare rarity is really nice too, so I guess it was one of the things that would make sense to try to buy out if you were looking for some sort of Salamangrate target, given how a lot of the deck is really budget, affordable, and in lower rarities. The card also has a couple of different common printings available too, so if you just need it to play the deck, there are budget alternatives available. Besides, Salamangrate is one of the most iconic budget decks of all time, and I think that blinging out something with so many budget cards in it already is honestly kind of a wasted effort. So I think that the Salamangrate card that has kind of slid under the radar recently is Salamangrate Bail Links, the Link 1 monster from the Structure deck. This card is basically a Striker Dragon for the Salamangrate strategy, letting you search for Salamangrate Sanctuary, the Field Spell, and that Field Spell is what allows them to reincarnate summon, a very key part of what the deck tries to do. This card is definitely a 3 of in the strategy, as you can basically go into it whenever you need it with any of your Salamangrate monsters. It also provides utility while it's in the graveyard as well, allowing you to banish it in lieu of one of your Salamangrate cards being destroyed by battle or card effects. I think that because of how Salamangrates are always kind of known as being a budget deck, people disregard this card as being budget too, especially because it is from the structure deck. But as we've seen with cards like Lilith from the Layer of Darkness structure deck or Overraptor from the Dino structure deck, structure deck exclusives can be hard to find if they aren't reprinted and as a result get quite expensive in price, especially after a couple of years. This is the case with this deck, as Bailings has just the one printing and it's a 3 of that's going to cost about $6 each at the moment. To be fair, with several big reprint sets coming up before the end of the year, it does feel like Bailings is destined to be reprinted soon, so maybe don't scramble to pick up the card quite yet. I think that the price of this card will settle back down in a couple of weeks as the initial hype for Mirage Stallio's unbanning dies down. Alright, so I think Animadorned Archosaur is a card that we've talked about several times on Market Watch before, especially around the banless season. I feel like there's a chance that Dinos could have been hit on any of the last couple of lists. I don't think that there's a big difference in how Dinos performed the last couple of months versus the previous couple of formats, but I guess that's just how Konami decided that they wanted to do it. 
Anyways, with Miscellaneousaurus now limited, the Dino deck does get a lot weaker. It still has some interesting combos and plays that it can pull off. Ultimate Conductor Tyranno is still an amazing card. But with Misk at 1, the deck just lost a lot of power, putting Misk from 1 to 3 a few lists ago, combined with the release of Arcasaur, is what allowed the deck to see as much competitive success as it did. Anyways, with the hit to Misk, Arcasaur has quickly fallen in price back down to the $50 mark, which is quite a bit lower than the $70 to $75 mark that we are used to seeing it at. However, I would definitely think that this is just the beginning of a downward spiral for this card. With Dinos not likely to perform well moving forward, Arcasaur should slowly decline in price. And also with an expected reprint in the 2021 Megatons, I would think that even the original Secret Airs will fall to around $20 to $30 in just a few months, having lost most of their competitive utility. There will probably still be people trying to play dinos that are still big on the deck, and to be fair, people will get lucky and someone's probably going to see some success with it at some point, but I think that for most players, the dino deck isn't one that they're going to worry about much more anymore, or want to play, and I would expect the price of Arcasaur to come down very very quickly as a direct result. Alright guys, the last card I want to talk about today is Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, something that kind of confuses me. I think that Dragoon gets a lot of attention at banlist time because it's such a broken card on its own. It's the type of card that if you catch someone unprepared, it will win you the game entirely on its own. And to be fair, the card was a really big problem over in the OCG, and I believe it's now banned over there. However, I honestly think that the card just isn't as big of a problem here in the TCG. When you look at the top deck list from recent events, you very rarely ever see Dragoon in very many lists, and if you do, it's typically in some sort of more rogue, gimmicky strategy. The card requires you to run several bricks in your deck, it takes up multiple extra deck slots as well, and I think it's something that players look at here as not being worth those added inconsistencies, and of course, I mean you should still be ready to deal with Dragoon, a lot of people play something like Forbidden Droplets to deal with it, and realistically, if you don't have an out to Dragoon, you probably also don't have like an out to Winda, and you're gonna have a bad time at the event anyways. On top of all of this, let's keep in mind that Dragoon only has the one printing from the 2020 Megatons. There is still a lot more time for Konami to milk Dragoon to help sell some additional products. I think that the card would look absolutely amazing as an ultimate rare, or maybe they're going to try to give it a collector's rare or maximum gold rare treatment, who really knows? The point is, with only the one printing, Konami hasn't used it to sell enough product to consider banning the card quite yet. Despite all of these things, I guess people still get surprised when the card is unbanned and they buy it right after the ban list comes out and they see that it wasn't hit, as the card just this week jumped from like $60 to $65 up to $75 now. I think that we saw a similar bump up in price after the last ban list as well. If I were you guys, I would just hold on to my one copy of Dragoon that you can play in your own deck if you want to because I don't really see the card going anywhere anytime soon. Okay guys, that is it for today's episode. I know a lot of it was centered around Sky Strikers. There wasn't actually too much movement on the market quite yet. I am sure, however, that we will see much more movement after we have some events under the new list as people scramble to figure out what the best decks of the new format are. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's market watch, please make sure that you hit that thumbs up button for me and let me know. Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the cards that we talked about in today's episode, or also let me know about what other cards are trending on the market so that I can cover them in future episodes. Also, if you haven't already, make sure that you show me and Tombox some love and hit that subscribe button for the channel. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.